Hi again, everyone, and welcome to Lecture 4. Today, we'll be talking about uh, the thesis statement, a uh, bit of structure, and you may be wondering, why are we talking about the thesis statement so early when um, your final paper isn't due for a while? Well, I'm going to try and incorporate the whole idea of the thesis statement into the connection to a summary as well. Um, if you remember in Lecture 2, I believe, we were talking about how we can strategize figuring out the thesis statement by looking at certain other aspects of the, the, the piece of writing that you're looking at, right? And so, um, yeah, so, so I, I was trying to connect the whole idea of, uh, of the title, like a whole lot of other things. Go back to lecture two if you're not quite sure what I'm talking about, and you'll see what I mean. But, but primarily, this lecture will be about how to create your own thesis statement, all right? At, at least that'll be the beginning. Then I'll, then I'll make some other connections along the way. Then I'm going to literally take you through a step-by-step -step process of how to put a paper together. And again, I know this is early, but this is crucial for understanding structure. Understanding how to put a paper together rather than simply going through point after point after point, which I know I talked about in lecture two. And I'm just trying to show you how to get that, that flow to a paper, continuity development, all of those things. Okay? All right. So let's just talk, let, let's start with the, the basics, like the, the, the thesis statement. And you have your notes in front of you, as usual. Okay, make sure you do. That, that saves a whole lot of questions when it comes to the workshops. It really does. All right? So um, any strong paper, obviously. And so, and so like I said, we're, we're talking now about down the road, your final paper, um, but also other strategies. Any strong paper begins with a clear or argumentative thesis. Highlight the word argumentative. Okay. Uh, I, there, there was like a thousand things I was about to, to go into there. Just highlight the word argumentative. Almost every paper that you will be asked to do at the university level will be an argument of some sort. Okay. Yes, there will be exceptions. Okay. But for the most part, they will be arguments. So that's what I'm going to try and show you now. How do we create a really good argument? And then later on in lecture eight, I believe, then, then I actually go through the whole process of, of logic and everything else. All right. In other words, by the time we're, we're getting ready for your paper, then we'll go through all that too. All right. Everything will fall into place. You'll see. And so um, a good thesis, all right, will incorporate the following elements that I'm about to show you. Again, make notes as we go along. Don't be afraid to pause. Make some quick notes, all right? It just, again, it saves so much time in the workshop when uh, this has happened so many other times before where other students who have watched the lectures made notes, they'll be listening to someone asking questions that have already been answered in the lectures. And so, and you can just tell, it just, it breaks the flow of the whole workshop environment, all right? So like I said, so make some notes right now. Okay, first thing. A really good thesis is argumentative. I know, it's obvious, right? Like, well, yes, it's an argumentative. But what exactly does that mean? Everyone thinks they know what a thesis is, but it doesn't necessarily, like, but, but, but their understanding doesn't necessarily uh, translate into a really good thesis. So, a really good thesis will make a case. So, I bolded that for you. I've given you your notes. I mean, I don't know how clearer I can be. It makes a case. It, you take a stand, okay? Now, in the course outline, I've given you some topics for your final papers, all right? But I strongly recommend that you don't, don't use any of those. Come up with something on your own. And that's exactly what the workshop is all about, where we'll start, you know, weeks from now, where we'll start talking about your topics and, you know, how we can develop them and, you know, make them more precise and all of that. So even though there are topics in your outline, I really would stress, create one of your own, okay? All right, so, so you're gonna make a case. You're gonna take a stand, all right? Okay, the biggest difference between a thesis and a topic, okay, that's the next thing in the notes. A topic would be something like magic in the Harry Potter novels, okay? So, so in other words, let's just say, let's just say for a moment, that was my thesis. Well, think about that for a moment. My thesis is magic in the Harry Potter novels. How long would that paper be? 
25,000 pages. <laughs> in other words, if you had a thesis like that, you'd probably end up just giving a whole lot of random examples of magic in the Harry Potter no sorry, in Harry Potter novels. But you wouldn't really have any kind of central focus to anything. Okay. So now and think about this because you are going to have to develop your own your own topic, all right? Or your own thesis, well, both for the final paper. So, okay, so what do we do with that? Well, I'm interested in magic in the Harry Potter novels. Okay, okay, we can start with that. Okay. At the moment, it's too general, okay? To turn it into a thesis, on the other hand, all right, we have to start doing a couple of things. We want, we want to make a specific case. And so we want to try and prove something rather than show. That, 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 that's the common thing that we, we will end up talking about in the groups, okay? Or in the workshops, whatever you want to call them. Uh, the difference between proving something and showing something. You want to prove. You want to take a stand and prove. And so, one way to tell a thesis from a topic, it's not, this is not a bad tip, actually. If it doesn't have an active verb, a word like because, Okay. Um, then it's probably still a topic. And, and and don't worry about that for now. Don't, again, don't email me like, what did you mean by that? <laughs> We're going to talk about all this stuff in group, okay? I keep calling it group. Uh, it used to be called group. Now it's called workshop. Whatever the hell. It doesn't matter, okay? When when I see you, like, together, um, well, not together, but <laughs> you know what I mean, then we'll, we'll, we'll elaborate on all this. That's the whole idea, all right? Okay. And so you're going to start with a topic, but then how do we turn it into a thesis? I'm jumping a bit ahead of myself here, okay? But it's quite simple. Start with your topic and then start asking some questions. What about magic in uh, the Harry Potter novels? Why, why is magic, why is it reflected the way that it is? So literally you start asking some questions. And then, as you start exploring possible answers, believe it or not, that's how you start to get into um, a better thesis, a working thesis. And that's, that's more or less where we're going to end off in the, the second part of the lecture today, when we start talking about structure, okay? You'll, you'll see what I mean. Okay, now, this next word, people for some reason, n not too many, but every, every once in a while, one or two individuals really misconstrue what I'm trying to show in the second aspect here. Your thesis should be controversial. But what do I mean by that? I don't mean, okay, there's the example right there. Abortionists should be shot. Okay, well, yeah, yeah, that's pretty controversial, but that's not at all what I mean. No, 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 no. What I mean is an intelligent person should be able to disagree with your argument. And at, at first you may you, you might may think, well, well, that's a bit daunting. Like, like, well, no, think about it. If you're going to write an argument and everyone agrees with it, what was the point of writing the argument? <laughs> right? <laughs> oh, oh, I hope you see the logic there. Okay. So there's no point in writing an argument in which everyone agrees. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. You're right. You're right. Yeah, yeah. Oh, good, good, good. Yeah. Okay, so an intelligent person should be able to disagree. So I go back to the earlier point. You take a stand. You're going to take a stand on an issue and then work it through. And again, this will all be elaborated in the coming weeks as the uh, sorry as the course unfolds. You'll see. Okay, but I'm just giving you a, a, a general idea for now. Maybe for other papers and other courses, right? Maybe you're struggling with the thesis statement. Well, then this is exactly what you want to be thinking about. Okay, all right. So if everyone agrees with you, at, uh, you know, initially, then it's obviously it's too obvious. And so and therefore, right, probably not worth writing about. Well, I shouldn't say probably it's not worth writing about. OK. All right. And so um, it has to be something that you can reasonably argue. Like, you know, again, you're not just showing stuff. You're, you're actually arguing through points. You're making a stand. OK. And so. Um, a couple of other notes that I have here. It's not enough merely to give an unsupported opinion. So obviously that's where research will come in. But let me get to that in just a second, okay? Because I, I want to make some very clear points about research, right? So, but let's just do one more thing. 
Actually, we'll do two more things. No big deal. So, so the thesis should also be analytical, not evaluative. This is all here in your notes. You know, maybe highlight the bolds or whatever. But a university paper, this is, oh man, I come across this. I come across this every, every term. Every term. So you do not, let me just read the notes, okay? Then I'll, I'll elaborate. A university paper isn't the place to praise or blame, okay? So the, the, the type of thesis I'm thinking about would be something like Paradise Lost. That's a, that's a, a, a book-long poem um, by, sorry, I've got thing. A anyway, it's a book-long poem by Milton. And um, <laughs> I don't even want to get it. Why, why am I even talking about this? Okay, don't worry about it, all right? But anyway, but, but the student has written, Paradise Lost is an enduring expression of the human spirit. How in the world would you prove something like that? <laughs> so, so that's where I would write in, in the notes um, uh, when I'm commenting, this sounds like a book review, okay? And, and that doesn't just happen with literary works. It, it, it can happen in so many different ways. So watch out for stuff like that. So you're not, you're not giving a thumbs up or a thumbs down when it comes to your topic. You're making an argument. You're working something through, all right? Okay, and so, yeah, uh, sorry, I have another example there, a literary example. The Hobbit isn't a successful, isn't successful in its choice of narrative techniques. What the hell does that mean? <laughs> okay, so all I'm trying to show you here is do not give a book review when it comes to your final paper, okay? When it comes to the final term paper, do not give a book review, okay? That, that's, that's really all I'm suggesting there, all right? So that's why in the, the very... It's funny, I've done this lecture before, so I can always anticipate what's coming up next. So that's the business of book reviewers, okay? No thumbs up, no thumbs down. All right. Then, you want to be specific. Now, I could go on for 20 minutes about about the specificity of, of, of a thesis, of a topic, what have you, but that's exactly what we'll do in the work, in, in, in the uh, workshops, Right, where we'll we'll talk about topic. I'm going to give you a good example here in just a second. But we'll talk about a topic. Then I'll try and I'll throw ideas at you, and uh, we'll we'll narrow it down. That's really important when it comes to writing a paper. Is understanding the parameters, the parameters of the paper. Like, is is the topic way too general? Well, then let's see if we can't fix that. And we will do that together. Okay, we'll do that together in the workshops. All right. So. It's not enough to deal then in generalities. And again, that's a very common uh, comment that I put on papers. All right? Uh, like too general. This is just too general. Wh which means you're not really getting at the heart of anything. You're just more or less covering the surface. All right? And so, yeah. Um, when like, like You're, you're going to talk about God or the immigrant experience in the 20th century. Well, my goodness. I mean... You know, we could go on forever about topics like that. But, but, could you take one aspect of, say, the immigrant ex uh, uh, experience in the 20th century? Can we start to whittle that down and then look at maybe one specific settlement? Okay. Why did a certain group of individuals settle in a certain place? Like, what was, what, what, what may be the reasons for that? That's exactly how then, how, how the workshop will work, where, We'll go back and forth and think, oh, okay, okay, now we're, we have something to work with. All right? Okay. And so, yeah, that's good enough for, for page one. Um, the idea being that, that, that you'll, be able to, you'll be able to write on anything you want, but it'll be a matter then of how do we figure out to get, to get an angle into that topic. Okay, okay, I'll give you a perfect example right now. All right? Okay. I want to write on, okay, my topic will be feminism. Okay, my thesis will be feminism in, uh, in I, I will explore feminism in the 20th century. Well, my God, I, I, like, f first of all, you don't have an argument. Secondly, you could write 25,000 pages again on that topic and not really get anywhere. Okay, but let's just say you and I started talking or the, or the group starts talking together and uh, all of a sudden, we came up with an aspect of feminism. What was the one major piece of legislation? Just giving you an example. What was the one major piece of legislation that led to 
the, the most important breakthrough for women in the 20th century. And I'm not, I, I'm not going to give you the answer there. I'm saying that's exactly how we would work it through. Then all of a sudden you pick something, you take that stance, boom, okay, and boom goes the dynamite. I love saying that phrase, okay? Very obvious, but anyway, and boom goes the dynamite. So, but, but, but do you see what I mean by that? We started with feminism. You want to write on feminism. Okay. But then we have to start asking questions about, well, what aspect of feminism? How will we get through the paper? And then you, all of a sudden, after after doing a bit of research, which all we're going to talk about in about 15, 20 minutes, after doing a bit of research, you start to realize, oh, this, this really led to some major, major turning points in the, the, uh, the role of feminism in the 20th century. Okay. But, but, but we can do that with almost any topic, almost any topic, I'm sure. No matter what you come up with in, in the workshop, I'll, I'll be able to help you and say, okay, yeah, what about this? Or maybe think about that, right? I, I mean, I may not. There, there, you may come up with a topic and I have no idea what you're talking about, right? I mean, <laughs> like TikTok, what the hell is that? <laughs> I'm joking. I know what it is, but, but, but you follow what I mean, right? Anyway, okay. And so, so, but again, that's the stuff we'll do in the workshop, right? Like, like we'll figure it out. But once you, but once you start figuring that out, it, it, let me let me backtrack just a second. It's easy to do that when you're dealing w with another person like like myself who can, you know, you can soundboard, right? Throw stuff off of. But later on, you'll think, well, how am I going to do that on my own? You'll see. Once you start getting into the habit of, of asking questions, trying to figure out angles, then all of a sudden, you're, you will improve in your thesis statements. You will. You'll see. Okay? But again, but it's a process, right? Okay. And so then finally, I, I shouldn't say finally. I, I think I mentioned that in an earlier lecture uh, because we're only, we're, we've only just begun today. <laughs> that was a Carpenter's song. If you know that, you're, you're, you're too old. <laughs> anyway. Um, and then finally, when you finally get into your own papers, I used the word finally three times in a row there, um, then you'll get into research. And that's why in the notes it says well supported. Okay. So research is strongly recommended if you want to get high grades at the university. The, and, and the that's not an opinion, okay? <laughs> like, if you're thinking, well, like, why do I have to do all this? That's the way academics work. Otherwise, why are you paying, paying like, $40,000 a year or whatever you're paying, right? If the idea is to start understanding what's going on in your chosen field, all right? And I know some of you haven't figured that out just yet, but eventually you will. And so, research, well, it's mandatory in this course, Okay. Uh, as a matter of fact, even though I'm getting a tiny bit, or I am getting ahead of myself right now, you have to have you will have to have two sources for your final paper. But again, don't worry, don't email me. We'll get there. All right, that's like lecture seven, I think. Okay, we'll, we're, where I'll show you all that kind of stuff. Although there is a virtual library tour already uh, set up for you in the course files. So uh, maybe maybe I should take one second to to go back to that. So when you go into the course content, you'll see all the lectures. And well, obviously, if you're watching this now, you know how to find those. But you'll also see those course files uh, just at the top. And uh, the course files, and it's simple. It's simple things like there's a virtual library tour. Um, there, there are first page samples of an essay for APA and MLA. Can't remember the others. There's a works cited example uh, for MLA, I believe. Um, and, and there's about, I think there's five. Oh, oh, and I should also mention at the very bottom, I don't know if I mentioned this before, maybe I didn't, there's also the quiz component, right? But the quiz component, it, 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 for some reason, Brightspace wants us to use that word, quiz. Um, it, it simply, that's where you'll find the quizzes and your assignments and all that. And so, when, so don't worry, you've already been given the information. Like, for instance, um, if you're doing the, the summary, when we do the, the summary uh, uh, assignment, uh, it, it, it's in there, but you can't see it until I make it visible, okay? And then once I make it visible, the only thing you will see is the article. And In other words, there will be an article all of a sudden appearing. Then you download the article, read it, and start writing your summary. 
based on all the instructions that were, I believe, provided in Lecture 3, I believe. It's either 2 or 3. So in other words, you already have all the instructions you need to do the first assignment. So don't, don't expect that all of a sudden all the instructions are there again. They're not. Okay? So, like... I, I don't know how else, how clearer I can be on that. All right. So, but but I already I already went through the instructions and everything else. All right. So, but not a bad idea. Download them, print them, whatever. But as I said, you won't see anything in that quiz module until I actually make it visible. Like they're all there already. Okay. All right. Okay. So now let's go back to research just for a second. I just want to add a few points to that. When students, when some students hear that research is important and, and 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 professors want research in their papers, for some reason they automatically think so. Therefore, my my opinion is not important. No, 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 no. Your opinion, your opinion, drives the entire paper. It just so happens that in academics we find other voices that may agree with our opinion. So, here's a little, uh, like, it's a little catchphrase that I'd like to use, and um, I, I think if you if you follow what I'm trying to show you here, it'll, it'll make a, a great deal of sense. Every argumentative paper, every argumentative paper is subjective. Uh, I, the whole idea of an argument means you're taking a stand, therefore, it's subjective, okay? It's your opinion. The key to really good writing is to make it sound objective. And I'll come back to that over and over and over again in the course. The key is to make it sound objective. By doing, by, by doing a bit of research, that helps us to make it look like I'm not the only one with this opinion. Others with good standing in academic fields, they also see it the same way. But there's, there's other little subtleties I'm going to show you later on. I'll show you one right now, okay? Every argument is subjective. The key is to make it sound objective. Get rid of the word I in your papers. Get rid of the word I, the first person pronoun. Okay? Do you want to fight me on that? Go ahead. I, like, I, and I won't even bother fighting back. Yeah, sure. Do whatever the hell you want. Do you follow what I'm saying? <laughs> Don't do it. <laughs> because when you keep using the first... And, 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 oh, sorry. And I should tell you, the MLA, the OWL at Purdue and MLA, they now say it is fine to use the first person pronoun. They do. They do. So, yeah, I, I know. I know if you want to look this stuff up. But let me ask you, why would you do that? I know why MLA says you can do that. Because now, everyone, everyone gets a ribbon. Everyone gets a ribbon. Or a gold star. We're all important. It's this liberal world we've moved into where, where everything matters. Right? <laughs> and, and and as the great Dostoevsky, the, the Russian writer, once said, if everything matters, then nothing matters. So my, my point being, like if we if we go to a tournament of any sort, doesn't matter what it is, okay, um, then everyone gets a, a reward of some sort. Okay. And so my point is, if you... I've, I've got examples here. It's, it's amazing. I think, I think about this when it comes to writing. Um, let's just say, all right, uh, you keep saying the word I. Guess guess what words are going to follow the word I? I think. I feel. I believe. And what you're, what you're doing there, you're reinforcing to the reader that this is a subjective position. That's what you're doing. You're reinforcing this is your opinion. Instead, why not shift up your writing? Okay? By simply saying, this is the way it is. Not I think, not I feel, no. This is the way it is. Difference between subjective and objective. There is a, a perfect example right there. 
Some of you, I know you will not break the habit of using the first person pronoun, but it, it is really ineffective. It is really ineffective. And I think I've got some examples. Yep, the examples are coming up in a moment. All right. And so, before we get into more specifics, let's just take a look at some general remarks. Okay. Oh, sorry. So, so let's just remember the idea of research. The, the idea of research is not to take away from your opinion. It's to reinforce your opinion because other, academic, uh, other academics totally agree with it. That's the way research works. Okay? And if I'm not mistaken, and I'm not, <laughs> you'll need two peer-reviewed journals, uh, refer references, uh, for your final paper at the end of this course. But we haven't talked about that yet. So, again, don't worry. All right? All right. Now, the thesis statement. Where should we find the thesis statement in your essay? I know you've been told many things in high school. I know. And I don't know why, but some individuals are, are, are told that the, the, the thesis should be the very first sentence in the paper. Okay? Sorry, I... I've done. St I've read studies on this. I have done this for so many years. I'm, I'm not even going to go through the logistics and the explanation. Your thesis should be the final sentence in your introduction. Simple as that. It's right there, bolded. Okay. I strongly suggest the thesis should be the last sentence of your introduction, and then later on, because we're not too worried about we're not worried about introductions just yet, right? But later on, I'm going to show you how to put a really good introduction together. Let me do it just quickly right now. There should be three elements in you. In, like I was w waving goodbye there. But um, there should be three elements in a very good introduction. There should be a general opening statement. And so that's where you, you, you're you more or less introducing the topic. Okay. There are many aspects of feminism that, 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 that arose in the 20th century, period. In other words, you haven't really said anything, but we know, okay, paper's going to be about feminism in some sort or another. Then, in the next part of the introduction, you get into the areas of argument. Remember, I talked about that in Lecture 2. Pro I probably mentioned it in Lecture 3 as well. The areas of argument, the sections. How are we going to get through this paper, right? Then, finally, you would have your thesis statement. I've seen books, um, I think... Even the practical stylist, I'm trying to remember what page it's on. It's around 165, where, um, and you don't need that book, but I'm just saying off the top of my head, uh, where they have the, 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 the triangle effect, right? The, the upside down triangle where it starts general, then becomes more specific as we get to the final, the final sentence of the introduction, right? And that, and that, that is a, that, that's not a bad way of thinking about it. If you don't know what I'm talking about, don't worry about it. But, but, but the idea is, the introduction starts a bit general, but then moves towards the specific as we get to the end. All right. And so the thesis, as I said, really should. And, and by the way, the thesis should be one sentence. Your introduction should be one paragraph for for the kind of papers that we're doing at this level, like in, in undergraduate. Really, your introduction should simply be one paragraph and the thesis should be one specific sentence. That's it. We'll do more with that later on. If we want to talk about that in workshop, we can. Okay. But again, these are the kind of things. Don't again. Don't send me an email on that because other people might have the same questions. So we'll 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 get to it. Okay. Now here's some some little tips to think about in the writing pro in your writing process. Okay. When you're constructing a thesis. Do not worry about having a refined thesis to start writing. Okay? You're going to have to do some research. But in other words, don't have your mind made up too early. I used to do that in high school. Oh, my God. I would have my mind made up about whatever I was going to be writing about. And then guess what? Now I have to go find information to fit whatever little box I've created for myself. Do it the opposite way. I, mean, I am getting a bit ahead of myself here, but do it the opposite way. Wait, slow down, go do some research on a topic, then find out what the research says, then you can start thinking about a thesis, not the other way around. In a moment, I'm going to show you that the introduction for a paper 
should should actually come much later than 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 you think. You should not write an introduction before you do a whole lot of other things. And so, uh, again, I'm getting ahead of myself, but you'll see, you'll see. And so, uh, I'm going to jump a bit here, okay? Just just because I, I I'm, I'm I've already said many of the things that I was anticipating. Yeah, you could have a provisional thesis to begin with, but you may be wrong. It may turn out that the evidence shows that you're wrong. That's all I'm saying by that. Don't get married to your idea, all right? Instead, find out. And that's really what university is all about. Like many of our opinions that we have, we haven't even really thought about. We have opinions based on what? Television, news, uh, parents, friends, but, but have you actually worked them through? And so once you start working things through, all of a sudden, maybe your opinions might change on certain things. Okay, I should say something else as well. Going back to um, the idea of controvert, like a controversial thesis, all I meant by that was that a person, an intelligent person, should be able to disagree. But I do not, not, not want controversial topics. Do not choose abortion. Do like don't do that. Okay, or. Um, well, I, I don't want to come up, come up with any others right now, but don't choose something like that. You only have, what, four to five pages at the end of the course for your final term paper. What would be the point of trying to, 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 to write a paper in which you think you're actually going to change someone's mind when it comes to a controversial, controversial subject like that? Okay, Sorry, that was an afterthought. But w again, we're going to come back to that later on in the course. And so, um, so, so let's just do a couple of quick things here, all right? So after you've done your research, then you can start to think about a provisional thesis, okay? But but you, you haven't sharpened it just yet because there's so much more things we're going to do. Often, you will find, this is really interesting, I, again, because I've done this for so, so long, for so long. Um, often, you will find a, the, an as, a working aspect of a thesis in your final draft in your conclusion. That happens quite often. Uh, introverts, introverts actually will quite often have their thesis in the conclusion, not the introduction, because they're afraid to actually come out and say whatever, what, like whatever side that they they want to argue. They feel as though they have to work towards it, back into it, and then say it at the end. If you happen to be that type of writer, that's fine, your choice. <laughs> anyway. Um, but, but but then what you want to do, after you've written a draft, then when you see, okay, that was the stance I just took, all right, then cut and paste. Now is the time to take it out of the conclusion and put it in the introduction, all right? And, and again, we'll, we'll chat about stuff like that in the workshop, right? Sim these, th these are very common things that I've come across, all right? Nothing new, nothing, you know. I didn't know how to end that sentence. Anyway. <laughs> All right. And Okay, so I'm just going to read that again. You'll often find, okay, a version of, of your final thesis in the last paragraph of a first draft. No problem. As a matter of fact, that, that, that's probably better. Like, like, rather than making an introduction at the beginning, no, let the, the information do what it's doing, then come to your conclusion, and then... Take the, the the thesis aspect and now put it exactly where it should be. Last sentence of the introduction. Right? Perfect. Okay. So that's why, and this is one of my favorite phrases in writing. That is why I have there a strong final thesis. Okay. A strong final thesis should emerge from, not precede, your analyses. You do the analysis, right, or the analyses, in other words, different research, what have you. And then all of a sudden, now I can create a really strong thesis based on what I've found. Right? And so, again, that'll be for your final paper. But it may help for doing summaries. Okay? When, like when you're trying to figure out the thesis... Well, maybe, maybe you had a bit of trouble at first, but then maybe the writer comes back to it at the end. 
And then you can take that, like strategies, right? Strategies, okay? So, it, and it would be exactly like your own paper. Like w w once you have that structure in place, then all of a sudden you would have your intro, but you'd probably come back to it at the end in your conclusion. And a, any really good writer will do that. So think about that for your, for your sorry, for your summaries and your midterm as well. All right. Okay. So now, really straightforward. I, I mean, incredibly straightforward what I'm about to do now. I want to show you a weak phrase when it comes to a thesis. And these are so common. I see these all the time. In this paper, I will show. Or, this paper will show. Don't do that. It's, it, 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 it immediately tells me you don't have an argument. Seriously. I, I, I know some of the things that I'm saying are so general. So, like, how, how can you say that? So, well, <laughs> I've done this so many times, as I said. The minute I see a phrase like that, I will show. Well, guess what? what did, like, what did you just tell me? You told me you're going to show me. You're not going to argue. So don't use a phrase like that for an intro, okay? Or this paper will show. No. Also, maybe watch out for a few stylistic things. For instance, this paper will prove, or I will prove. Okay, that it's a bit better, but it's still a bit too obvious. So that's purely a stylistic thing there, where I, like... Yeah, I, I don't even need to say anything more than that. Phrases like that, they're simply too obvious. Okay? Instead, do it. Right? Yeah, instead, write whatever you are about to say. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, if, you ha if you're in the habit of, uh, of writing things like this paper will prove, I'll bet whatever clause comes next, remember that from lecture three, okay? Whatever clause comes next, I'll bet that's all you need to say. The words that follow that will probably be exactly what you intend to prove. Okay? So, and so, and so, when it comes to your thesis statements, or if you're looking at a summary, like if you're looking at an article and trying to summarize, right? Watch for those strategies. Watch for all the strategies that we just talked about earlier. Okay? And especially, uh, watch for how the writer will probably come back to the thesis at the end of the article, right? In some form or another. It won't be word for word, but in some form or another. All right? Okay. Now, just give me one second here. Throat is getting a bit dry. Ah, today it's iced tea, okay? Not hot tea. Um, okay. So now we're going to talk about organization. And I'm not going to take too long on this, maybe maybe 15 minutes, maybe. maybe. Uh, but I do want you to start thinking about putting, putting writing pieces together, all right? And so, let me go back about five, five, six minutes ago. When I was in high school, I would start with, like, like I, I'd be given a topic, that's usually how it works in high school, right? You're given a topic, and then immediately I would come up with an answer. I, I, would, I, I would have my answer already in place, which means I've already kind of created my thesis. And so, therefore, I would write an introduction. Well, that's the worst way you can actually go through the writing process. The absolute worst way. And I learned the hard way, okay? I mean, because as I said before, if you do that, now you have put yourself into a box and now you have to fit information into the box, whether it fits or not. You don't want to do that. Okay, so now let me just go through almost word for word. Okay, I'm going to bore the hell out of you for the next, like, for the last bit of the lecture. But literally, I want to show you how we put something together, a write, a, a piece of writing together. We would begin. So these are 15 steps to organization. There, there's one or two steps where you can eliminate. I'll, I'll, I'll even tell you when we get them. But, but I do want you to think about the idea of not starting too quickly. I once published an article uh, entitled, Why is English Taught Backwards? Where we're given something to write, but we're not actually shown, we're not given the tools on how to write. So like, like you're given, what, an independent study on, on Hamlet or whatever, 
All right. But but you're not actually shown how to put it all together. So that's not very helpful in my opinion. That's what we're doing right now. So let's look at organization. How do we organize our thoughts? This will this will this will come in handy for your summaries, for your midterm, and for your final paper or for, and your outline. Oh, like like structure, structure, structure. I think I think I mentioned that before, right? Okay. So we would begin by selecting a topic. Sometimes the topic is given to you, but I would prefer you choose your own, as as I've already mentioned. Okay. Now, after you have your topic, that's where you then start to ask some questions, right? And believe it or not, by asking those questions, that's kind of like the, the provisional formulation of a thesis. But you haven't created, you haven't created a thesis just yet. But, but you're starting to think about, I like to use the word, an angle. When you start asking questions about a topic, feminism, what about it? Is there something in particular that we can argue, okay? One aspect or what? So you start asking questions. Once you have those questions, like, you know, just germinating in, in your head, okay, we now start to do a bit of research. But we haven't made up our mind yet about anything. That's so important, okay? As I said, many of us have strong opinions on things that we've never actually even researched. <laughs> like, like we have these opinions about things, but well, do you have any evidence to back that up? Uh, no. <laughs> or, or as Consuela on Family Guy would say, no, 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 Mr. Superman, no home, no. <laughs> anyway, all right. So then, <laughs> so then, giggity, uh, so then you would start to gather information, okay? Research. You start to do a bit of research. You've got your topic, the area. You've asked some questions, but you haven't made up your mind on anything just yet. I can tell. I can tell when I'm reading a paper that the, the student has already made up their mind regardless of, of where the research took them, right? And they're not backing down from that opinion. So anyway, so you start to gather some research, right? I, I included one word here just because just I remember learning this in like grade nine, brainstorming. <laughs> Does anyone use that phrase anymore? Brainstorming. <laughs> but anyway, research is really what I'm talking about, okay? All right. So then, okay, so then you start to, obviously start to get your, uh, well, you'll all do it differently. Some of you will start to handwrite notes. Some of you have a, a file for certain, you know, certain elements of, of, of different papers, whatever. However you do it, you start to gather information, start to write stuff down. Now, at this point, you might just, you might start to think about a general thesis, okay? But you have but you haven't, you don't have a clear thesis just yet, but you're starting to move towards knowing, okay, what side am I taking in this, in, you know, in, in, in this area? Okay? All right. Then you might have come across some really interesting points, but, but they don't really fit with everything else that you found. Okay, eliminate those. And when I say eliminate, maybe save them in, an, in a file for later on. Because you see, at university... Once, once you start becoming more specific in your field, right? When, when once you start becoming really uh, specific in your discipline, you'll be writing on similar topics over and over again. Well, you may have found some some really good quotes that didn't quite fit with what you were doing f at the time, like that, you know. But but maybe you can come back to them later on, because maybe maybe they're 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 uh, they belong to a different aspect of a certain topic. Okay. And so, hang on to them. You never know, right? Then, okay, this, okay, this is it right here. Take a look at number six. You've got all this information in front of you. Well, okay, what am I going to do with all this? You start to group your ideas in relation to commonalities. What the hell do I mean by that? Do you remember I used a phrase, I believe it was in lecture two, umbrella terms sections, areas, whatever. You start to see if you can break down the material into, you know, workable modules. So for instance, let's just say, I'm doing this off the top of my head, let's just say you're talking about the environment. Okay, 
And so you do some research. Well, obviously, you're, like, there's going to be so much information out there on climate change or whatever, whatever you want to do. How do I make sense out of all this material? Well, okay, maybe I could look at climate change from a governmental point of view. Right? Like maybe my research, I noticed that there's certain points in there that deal with government positions. Then I also noticed that there's economic positions. Okay, and then I notice that there are, and it doesn't matter. So notice governmental, economic. I'm trying to find key words that can break down all this 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 information that I that I found. I want to start making it manageable. That's what I mean in in number six by great sorry by grouping your your ideas into commonalities. The key here is you have to force the commonalities. You have to you have to choose which one would fit with whatever word, and you're not going to include that word necessarily in, in the paper, like as a as a heading or, or what have you. But you want to start making sense out of the material. You want to make it manageable, okay? And so that's why I say this: key, the key to this step is that you you impose commonalities onto the various ideas or concepts. You pick and choose which ones seem to go together and if i had if i had the, the magic solution okay of how to do that for every paper i <laughs> i'd be rich okay <laughs> as, <laughs> uh, as the bare naked ladies would say i'd be rich anyway um but not a real green dress that's cruel okay anyway then once you've done that okay when, when, once you've kind of broken your ideas down then obviously you take each group, each section, each area, then you start to make sense out of that. So notice what we're doing here. The word I like to use is we're scaffolding ideas. We're literally building, building the paper. We're doing a whole lot of preliminary work first. We're not writing, okay? All, all we're doing is just kind of putting stuff together. We will get to the writing stage, but by doing all of this preliminary stuff, the writing stage becomes much easier, much easier, all right? So, as I said, in number seven, we position the ideas within the group. So, number eight, eliminate stuff that doesn't seem to fit. That, that, that's a hard thing for, for writers to do because you've done all this research. But let's just say there's this one perfect quote. Oh, man, this it, it worked but it doesn't go with anything else, don't include it. Because if you leave it out, the reader will never know that the uh, the quote was there or it was even a thought in your head. But if you include it, the reader will know immediately that didn't fit with anything else. That, that, that didn't make sense with everything else you were talking about. So watch out for that too, okay? That was number eight. Nine, then you position your groups. And this is, this is hard. Because in the notes, and I do not like the way I've written this, okay? I do not like it, Sam, I am. Uh, you have to position your groups into a logical order. Okay, I don't like the word logical. But I, I don't know what other word I, I can think of because you do have to, quote unquote, impose a sense of logic onto the paper. Can I talk about you know, these ideas here before I talk about the next ideas, or should I be talking about these ideas first and then put those, like th that, that's a difficult thing. But when we get to, I can't even remember now what lecture or what week, but when you hand in your outline, okay, which we'll be doing down the road, that's exactly where I'll be able to, to see, okay, maybe this section should work up here. As a matter of fact, when we get to the outline, I may even say, do you realize that your like section number two of, of your outline, again, don't worry, we haven't gotten there yet, but when I, we do an outline, I may say, section two could be your entire paper. And that happens all the time. That may, It makes perfect sense because, because what we have, if we're doing this all correctly, we have a paper with areas, but the areas can be broken into sub-areas, right? Sections, subsections. Well, if I have that, there's no reason why I couldn't have one section wherever it is, break that down into sub-sections, sorry, subsections, that becomes my paper. Why not? Right? And again, and we'll get to all of that, right? We'll, we'll, we'll get to all of that. 
And so, as I said, you will have to impose a logical way of presenting the material in the overall body of the essay. But we'll we'll work on that together, okay? But but as I said, once you get better at, at, at the writing process, you'll start to see the patterns emerge for yourself. Where you'll realize, yeah, I can't really start saying, I can't make those claims without actually setting up something else first, right? So that, that that's how logic works. When I say I don't like the word logic, I, I mean, if, if someone... It goes back to the, the, the phrase I used before about common sense, right? Although I said comma, sense. Comma, 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 comma. No, anyway, I won't do that again. Um, uh, all right, anyway, I think you get the idea. So, basically, now we're at step 10. Believe it or not, that's where we actually start writing. Where we actually start full sentences. Because, because before, we were simply building a structure. Once we have that structure in place... That's where you can actually start doing the writing process, okay? And because you've been doing all that preliminary work, now you can really start thinking about sharpening your thesis. So we're at step 10. That's really where the, the, the final thesis will start to emerge, okay? All right. Now, number 11, I, I, I'm, I'm going to jump over that because even though it is true that you want to have a controlling element for, 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 uh, for each group, that can get a bit tedious when we're writing shorter papers. But, but as long as you understand, let's go back for a second. Economic. Uh, what was the other word I, I used there? Doesn't matter. But remember how I was breaking up climate change? Oh, governmental policy, like policy, economic, whatever. That's what I mean by the controlling elements. But you, you don't necessarily need like the topic sentence exactly the same way every time. Like we, we, we want to move away from writing like that. But you certainly want, as I said, each time you move into a different section, you want to make sure you have the controlling element. And so when we do our outlines, when we finally get there, then you'll see that. But let's just do something quickly now. When we looked at don't blame the eater, for instance, well, were there controlling elements there? Reading, media, writing. Okay. I think I've got those in the right order. Maybe not. But, but, but you see what I'm saying there. Those are the controlling elements that give structure to the paper. Okay? All right. And then number 12. Believe it or not, now you can write your introduction. You couldn't write your introduction before because you didn't really have the whole, the whole scenario of where you were going. Now we can write a general opening statement. Then we can actually show the reader... The, the areas we'll be working through because now we know them because we work through them, okay? And then we can have our thesis. So the introduction is one of the last things you write, okay? I'm, I'm being literal here. It's one of the last things you write because if you do too early, you're just going to get frustrated, okay? And so that's why I have, and it's one of my, again, there's a couple of favorite phrases I have in, in this when it comes to structure, you should never create an introduction, okay, okay, too early. Instead, it should create itself more or less based on all the work you've completed. Okay, it, I'm telling you, it work. It, it 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 makes the writing process so much easier. Do the work ahead of time; everything else falls into place. The only thing you have to come up with, off, like off the top of your head, is the general opening statement, and that's the easiest statement in the entire paper. All right. Finally, then, maybe start another draft. And you can probably write your conclusion at this point as well. You've done everything else, right? So probably you can write a conclusion. Then, if time permits, this is so important, leave your assignment alone. Leave it alone. Go away. Go to a movie. Go, go do something else. Okay, go to a movie, download a movie, I guess I should say. <laughs> but when you're, when you're trying to edit, if you edit too soon, you won't catch many of the mistakes that you've made. If, if you've made any at all. <laughs> sorry, sorry about that. <laughs> Take some time, leave it alone, then go back to it. Because then you can start to check for logic, continuity, you know, small things. You wouldn't believe, you wouldn't believe how often, like a, a, a course outline, when I'm doing a course outline, it's amazing. For this course, 
I actually had to delete the course outline about 10 minutes before I actually allowed you guys to see it. I found two mistakes, tiny, tiny little things. There's always little things you can catch. But if you're looking at it constantly, then it's hard. As a matter of fact, I'm, I'm at number 14 now. It's always a good idea to give it to someone else. Someone else will catch your mistakes way, way more than you will. Only because it's fresh to them. New, a new set of ideas. You've heard that phrase before, I'm sure, right? Okay. And so, finally then, we are now at step 15. Okay, write your final draft and you're done. You've done so much work. Ahead of, uh, ahead of time, like you, you've been building, scaffolding is the word I like to use. And then now, yeah, you're ready to go. And so now you can start writing, connecting, what have you. And so a couple of last points then on that. When I, if I'm using the word group I mean, I, I, in, in structure, I, I'm saying it's the same thing as sections, right? Same idea. And so if you start to, to learn exactly how to, how to do these things, how to, how to put them together, you could write a book. Because think about something here that we have. Think of the structure of a textbook. A textbook is not, like it could be 300 pages, right? And the textbook does not start on page one and then is one continuous paragraph until 300 pages later. No. It's, it's broken down into something called chapters. But then each chapter is broken down as well. So we'll call it subchapters. Okay? That's not really the term you would use. How about instead we call it subsections? Each chapter is a section. Within each chapter is a subsections. Okay? And within each subsection, we can break those down as well. And literally, in, in, in some textbooks, they literally have it broken down that way. Right? So think about it. Once you start to learn the habit of structure, once you really start to get it, you could write a five-page paper and you could write a 10,000-page paper because it all, it all has to do with how do we take the material, break it down, and make sense out of it, okay? And so think about those strategies and when it comes to your own writing, not just for this course, but for all of the writing, all the essays you'll be writing at the university level because eventually you may end up in graduate school. And let's just say you end up writing a PhD thesis. Well, that's going to be 300 pages and it's going to seem daunting. But no, it won't be once we start breaking it down into sections, which you will end up calling chapters. All right. Okay. So that was lecture four. And um, as I said, there's plenty of material on Brightspace for you. There will be... Uh, there will not be instructions necessarily when you open up any assignments because the instructions will have already, already been provided for you. The first one, as I said, will be the summary on the due date, whenever that is in the course outline, but you already have your instructions in front of you based on, I believe, lecture three. Don't take my word on that. It's either lecture two or lecture three where it literally says summary instructions, okay? So print that off. And then when I make the, the summary visible, okay, the assignment visible, you'll have the article and then you're ready to go. Okay. All right. So I figured we would take about an hour today. I'm a, a minute and a half behind. So now I'm just going to stare at the, at the camera for a minute and a half. No, I'm not. <laughs> All right. Have a great rest of the day. Bye.